Welcome to part three of our claw machine build series. Today is all about the claw. Hello everyone, Chris here, and yes, we are continuing with our claw machine build series. And this one's all about the tool head for this fun project, and that is the claw. Now I've went through several different designs, but the main reason I built the claw the way I did for this machine was so I could use a NEMA 17 motor. Again, I wanted to make this as close to a 3D printer as I could and still utilize Marlin firmware out of the box. I really didn't have to change much with it because of the design choices that I made. So I know there's a lot better ways of doing a claw design, but this is the one that I came up with and it does seem to work pretty well. Also, I have a few different iterations for the claw buckets, including some with TPU, some work better than others, and I will share all that with you as we go. So let's jump right into it. I'll show you the original design and then we'll build one together. Here's what the claw looked like from the original machine. Now I have made a lot of changes since then, but this is gonna give you an idea of what we're getting ready to build. I'll show you step by step. But basically the jaws are held together with a spring. The stepper motor is hooked up with a wheel to a couple of pieces of wire rope. When it spins, it opens the claw. The spring helps close it. A standard NEMA 17 motor sandwiched in there on a piece of threaded rod. Fairly straightforward, but you do have to get it just right. So let's go ahead and start building one from scratch. So here's all the hardware we're going to need. M5 10mm screws for those. A couple of M4 by 10mm screws. These hold the spring on the bucket. As well as four M4 hex nuts. Three M5 nylock nuts. This is for the shaft that holds the whole thing together. A couple of square nuts. These are M3s. A hundred millimeter piece of M5 threaded rod. One M3 hex nut. Five M3 by 10 millimeter screws. Four M5 hex nuts. And four M3 by 45 millimeter screws. These go all the way through the motor, securing the motor mounts. Now, a lot of different springs would probably work, but all I could get was the standard one. It seems to work okay. It's a 5 16 by 1 and a quarter extension spring. And then you're going to need a couple of pieces, let's say two pieces of 100 millimeters long, 1 millimeter wire rope. You could use string, but I found the wire rope is a lot easier to deal with. We will cut these down to size and I used a couple of wire ferrules as crimps on the ends just to make it easier to install. And we've been talking about motor sizes this whole build. This is really the only one that matters how deep it is because I have a mount that goes on both sides. Now there's nothing saying you can't alter the printed part to use any motor size, but you do need a certain amount of torque to make that jaw work. This one is 39 millimeters wide. So if you're using my plans, you're using the same parts that I'm doing in this video, it'll have to be this size to fit, or you're gonna have to remix some of the parts. And for printed parts, you'll need a claw. By the time this video is done, there's gonna be several different versions of the claw out there, but you need an inside and an outside. I'm gonna make some with different types of teeth, but they just go together like this. You'll need a front mount for your claw motor, and then a back mount. You'll need the string holder. The string goes through here and then we tie it with a washer on this side to keep it on. You'll see that when we install the claw. And you'll need a wire wheel. This goes on the claw motor and the wire rope runs through here. When it turns, it pulls the claw open. You'll probably see this change color in this video because I am currently printing the one that I'm going to use. But it's the same part. So we'll start with our front mount. Before you put it on your motor, you're going to want to put one of your M3 by 10 millimeter screws through here and then fasten it with that M3 hex nut on the back. What this is, is a stop for that wire wheel. This is so that we can home the wire wheel. This acts as an extruder and you don't necessarily ever home an extruder but we have to know where zero is so we know how much to turn to open that claw. So that's what that's gonna do. It's kind of a stop. You'll see it in action later. Go ahead and install that. And then this is the front mount. It just goes on the front of the motor like this. And you use three of your M3 by 10 millimeter screws to fasten it on. And I just thought about it. I called out five 
M3 by 10 millimeters, you will actually need six. I have the wires going out the side of the claw, but then we can go ahead and turn it over and we'll put our back mount on. One side of this part is notched in a bit, so those longer screws will fit. I have removed all the screws from the stepper because we're going to put this on and then use those M3x45s through the back into the front to hold this all together. So just push all four through and connect them. Those are attached. Now your string holder is going to attach right here, but you don't want to put that on until we actually attach the string. But you can go ahead and put your four M5 hex nuts in the slots on these mounts. Just set them in there. Two on that side, and then two on that side. Now we'll move to working on the claw. So to attach the spring, we're gonna load an M4 hex nut in both sides of the claw. We'll just press it in there. And then with our M4 by 10s, we're just gonna put it through one of the loops on the spring, both of them, and then put your other hex nut on the screw to trap it. And once those are threaded on, they can just go on the bucket. So we'll put it together like this. It should just slide together. And then you can thread your spring on to those hex nuts we just put in place. And you don't want to completely smash that spring with the screws. Just put the screw in so that it's flush with the nut on the inside of the bucket. And then the outer nut, run that down with a wrench. See how there's a gap there? If you smash it, this thing will deform and that spring might come off of there. So you just want it hooked on there just good enough so that it can open and close. And that should let you be able to grip pretty much anything. From here, we want to install our threaded rod. This goes through the claw, holding the motor on through this mount. And we want to put some nylock nuts in here so this doesn't float around. So we're going to start by just putting one on the end of the shaft. Be careful, but you can grip this with a pair of pliers and give it a few turns. You don't want to mar those threads. Then we can start to thread the shaft through the hole in the claw. And then your motor can go in here. Now, the shaft of the motor needs to go to the front of the bucket. These two holes right here, this is where the wire rope's going to go, so that will attach to the shaft. So it goes in here just like this. And then I recommend when you get to the other side of the motor mounts, you put another nylock on right here. So it sandwiches this against the back of the claw bucket. Now, this can be just a bit tricky to get that nut to go on there, because we do have to push this whole thing back and get this nut up against this mount. But with any luck, you should be able to use this side of the shaft to spin that nut. So I just get my ratchet on this end and a wrench on this one and just try to advance the whole thing forward. It takes a little bit, but you only have to do it once. When you get it fairly close, you can just finish the rest up with a wrench, a handful of turns. You don't have to get it tight at all. You just don't want it floating around like this very much. You want it to stay towards the back of the bucket. So a couple more turns on that, and then we can put our nylock nut on the front just to make sure nothing goes anywhere. And the motor and shaft have been installed. Next, I took my pieces of one millimeter wire rope. I just left them long. Again, two pieces around 100 millimeters is more than enough. And I used wire ferrules in the opposite direction and then crimped them on. It was just an easy way for me to terminate these so that I could pull against them. They are nice and tight. You could use any kind of collar, but I figured a lot of us would probably have ferrules, so we can go with that. And these will just push through these two holes, one over here and then one over on this side over here. But just snake it through, and then the ferrule will set down inside that part. Same way for the one on this side. And then the wire will attach to that wire wheel that goes on the motor. Now for our wire wheel, this side goes towards the motor. The screw back here holds it onto the shaft. This screw here holds those pieces of wire rope. Now I'm going to try to use two M3 by 10 millimeter screws for both of these. But this one has to be able to touch that screw that's on the outside of the faceplate on the motor mount so that it can zero out on it. So we'll see how we do. But you need to put two square nuts in this slot right here, one after another. And then we'll just start the thread with our M3 by 10s, because both of these are actually going to touch the motor shaft. 
and then you can slide it on the motor. You want the screws to be on this side of that stop screw. That's why there's no screw up here. In case you want to use a longer one, it won't get in the way. And you want the flat spot of the shaft where the screws are. So small in, just like that. The base of the wire wheel should line up with the face of the mount. We'll just tighten up this back one here. This just holds it on the motor. And then if you turn it, it should collide with that stop screw. When we hit this a couple of times, we know the motor has been zeroed out. Then we know how far to turn to open the bucket. This one up here just holds the wire. The key to these pieces of wire being able to open the bucket, you want to make sure they're relatively the same length. So just feed one through the wire wheel. There should be a hole through the center. It's going to kind of follow that wheel around over to the other side of the bucket and then feed the other one in. The idea is you can adjust either one of these by itself. So get them somewhat close to being the same length. Just pull them tight. Make sure the motor's kind of hovering in the center of that bucket. So something like that. And then just snug up that screw. This will trap that wire up against the motor shaft so it doesn't move. And then you can give that wheel a spin by hand to see how it's going to open the bucket. What you're looking for is you just want to make sure that one bucket doesn't move further than the other side because they can move independently. You want them to be pretty equal. And in this case, this side's moving a lot more than this side. So I would snug the wire up, just pull it a little tighter for this bucket half until they start moving somewhat equal amounts. They don't have to be dead on, but the closer it is, the more fun it's going to be to pick up different objects. And you can always adjust it later. When you're happy with that, cut off most of this extra wire. You can just use your snips, but I would leave some just in case you have to adjust it later. So there's our claw assembly. We do have to put the top on, but we have to run the string through that top first. So let's get the string set up now. So the string wheel here we installed on the last video. This is what's going to pull that bucket up and down. But there's also going to be an end stop here that has a housing, as well as a PTFE tube that allows the string to move successfully. So we're going to pull this out, and then we'll run it through the necessary items to make its path clear. So this is our string housing. This is where the string will run, and it should have a piece of PTFE in it. It's about 16 millimeters long. I just get a little longer piece and then cut it off flush on the top. Remember with this tubing, use a razor to trim it. You don't want to pinch it with your cutters. And we're not really ready to put this on permanently yet, but we want to go ahead and get the string running through it. It's going to run top down. So let me show you on the machine. The cover will install like this. So we want to run that string through the top of it. So let's take our string, run it through our PTFE tube. This is standard tube that you'd see on a 3D printer. Two millimeter inside, four millimeter outer. And we'll just let that hang on the string for now until we're ready for it. Then the string will go through our claw top. This is what holds the top of the claw together. We'll just run it through and we'll pull it then there's no need to overcomplicate things by terminating this string. I just grab a washer and tie it on, give it a couple of knots. This way I can pull it off there if I need to as well. With our washer on, everything is in place. It'll retain it. Then we can go ahead and put our top onto our claw mounts. I put this little loop over on the side with the wires so that I can tie them down if I need to. And then this whole thing, Let's go on with our final four M5 by 10 millimeter screws. And there you have it. Our claw is complete. Feature Chris here, just real quick on the claw designs. This is the one that I showed you during the video. It's the three tooth design. This was the original one, but I've come up with a couple of others. The one being just kind of a beak, but the first 12 layers on the print I did in Ninja Flex. This one, to date, has worked the best. It gives it just a little bit of flex when it's picking up different objects. I really like this one. But I also came up with one that had multiple teeth. 
I really haven't tested this much yet, but you do get the teeth as well as the TPU. It might work pretty well. Don't know, but all of these designs will be out there on GitHub. You can give them a shot. I don't do anything different with the PLA versus the TPU. All I do is put a color change in around layer 12 that is a 0.2 layer height. Then I switch from the TPU for the base over to PLA. That's it. So good luck. Hopefully you come up with your own design. Again, all the files will be there. And there we go. Our claw has been built. And like I mentioned before, I would like to do several designs of the claw. Some will work better than others, depending on what you're trying to use in your candy claw machine. And we have a lot more work to go. Next up, we'll be wiring the controller, the joystick, and all the buttons to make everything work together. And I'm sure there'll be just a few more videos in this series. But that is it for today, and I'll see you really soon on the next one.